Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Facebook. Hallelujah. It's good to, I always say it's good to be in the presence of God. We, we can never get out of his presence. We can't. We can't. We can't. No, no matter where you go. No matter where you try to hide, the Lord is in his presence. Because he says he's what? He's unlike for us. Yes, he is. And he is. And I, you know what? I, I'm, 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 what? And got, I, I'm just excited uh -huh. to be in the land yes. or in the kingdom of God at this time. The whole that we're in. And, and we're here for a reason. Yes. He left yes. us in the kingdom for a reason. We're here uh, to proclaim the greatness and the goodness of the Lord. And if you would just bow your heads with me just briefly. Father, we thank you. And we give praise to your awesome and magnificent name. Thank you, Father, for your word, which is life. Thank you, Father, for your word, which gives us the blessings that we need to survive in the kingdom and in this world. Father, we thank you and we give praise to you, Father, because it is you who provides for our every need. Yes. Yes. And Father, we honor your Holy Spirit. Thank you for being God, the Holy Spirit that resides inside of us. Yes. When we accepted you, Jesus, as our Lord and Savior, Holy Spirit, you stepped in. Yes. Now, Holy Spirit, guide us and lead us. Holy Spirit, I thank you now for thinking through my mind, speaking through my voice box. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I say, God bless you this morning. Bless you. Yes. Happy. Elated to be here yeah. in the kingdom, and I, you know what? I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm confident in this that God yes. is going to do what He said He would do. Amen. He's going to fulfill His promises yes. to His people. All we have to do is believe, isn't it? Yeah. We got to just trust Him. Amen. I trust God, y'all. I have to trust God Amen. because if I don't trust Him, I uh, who, who am I going to, where else am I going to put my total trust? I have to put it in him. Yeah. In El Shaddai. Mm -hmm. The God that's what more than enough. So I have to put my trust in y'all have to put your trust in him. And do what God said then would be blessed. Amen. Okay? Amen. So this morning if you would turn with me to the gospel of Luke the 14th chapter. And we're going to read some out of that 14th chapter. And, and listen at this, in that 14th chapter, I, I want y'all to get a, get a glimpse of something because and starting at the 7th verse, Jesus did start, he did a parable. Then he moved on down to the uh, 15th verse and he did another parable. But in the beginning, it talks about Jesus going to one of the Pharisees' house. Uh, they was having what? They was having, they invited him to dinner. Yeah. And the Bible said that they watched him closely. So then I, I want y'all to understand, the moment that you began to honor God in your life or with your life, people will watch you closely. So they looked up on him because the question was in their mind, and Jesus knew what was in their hearts, uh, was this. That there was a sick person there who had the drop seeds. And it's a demon. And we know that a demon is a person that has... You know, we've seen people with large legs and, and it's tough. It, 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 the, the cause of that is what fluid getting up under the skin, around their ankles and their legs and, and get in the arms sometimes and the leg. And sometimes it even cause what congestive heart failure. The fluid would get into the lungs. So there was a man that was there that had the drops in. So they watched Jesus and, and they knew that Jesus had a, had, had, had a reputation of healing. So that's why they kept a what, closed eye on him. So they were looking at him, and, and Jesus, he asked some questions. He looked at them, and he said, which one of you had a donkey or an ox that fell in a pit on the Sabbath day? So they, they, they knew the hate. They knew the law, and they said, in the law, you know what's supposed to do anything. But then he, then Jesus asked the questions. He said, which one of you had a donkey or an ox that fell into a pit and would not get it, immediately get him out. They wouldn't answer a question. They didn't say a time. So that Jesus knew, hey, what was in their hearts. So Jesus went on down. He, 
he began to talk to him and he, he said something, he started in that seventh verse. He talked about a man giving a wedding and inviting people. And so he had invited guests and he said, which of you which was invited would come in to the place where the wedding was being held and sit in the best place or the highest place? He said, now, he said, if you did, he said, there would come in some other guest that was invited who was more important than you. So the one who invited the people or invited you would ask you to step down and let a higher person step up. Yeah, y'all have been to church where they have reserved seats. Yes, sir. That's reserved for what? A certain uh, uh, person or elite person yeah. that would come in. So, so here when Jesus was making this prayer, he said, now, if you did, you went in and you sat in that higher position. And so when the one come in who uh, had, did, had made the invitation, sent out the invitation, he looked at you and you sitting up there in the high position, he'll ask you to move. When somebody else come in, more important. And he said, now, you would be embarrassed. I'm putting it in my word. He said, now, you would be embarrassed, wouldn't you? Oh, but you had to get out what? Get out of the high place and move down. He said, why not sit in the lower place? And when he come in, and if you were higher than the other, he'll invite you to come up. Ooh, and sit there. Right. And he said, how, how, how proud you would feel. Come on, man. You know, you feel what? Word. Word. Yeah. Uh, why? You've been what? Invited to do what? Come up. But really what he was talking about was ambitious people. You know, who always, there are some people who always, if I'm not recognized, you, you got to recognize me. Come on here. Know who I am. Hey, I, 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 I sit in a high degree. I'm, you know, you, you know I, I'm important. But then Jesus went on down. He said, now, which of you, he said, now, if you have a dinner, he said, now, if you invite your mother, father, brother, sister, friends, to come to the dinner. He said, now, you know, you're doing it for a reason because you know that what? They're going to invite you back at some point. But he said, this what, what the parable was making was this. He said, invite those in whom not, who, who won't be able to invite you back to them. He said, now you're going to get a what? A reward. And he said, your reward is going to be what? Great. What? At, the, when, when, at the resurrection time, when we are caught up to meet Christ in the air, our reward is going to be great. So, that's, so he went on to do that. But the main parable I want to get to is this here in the 15th verse. Now, listen again. He said, now, he said, now when one of those who sat at the table with him, he said, with him, heard these things, he said to him, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Now, wait a minute. Then we look up at 16 verse. Then he said to him, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servants at supper time to say to those who were invited, come for all things are now ready. But listen, at that 18 verse. But they all, with one accord, began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. Another said, I have bought five yokes of oxen, oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Listen, listen. Still another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. Oh, wait a minute. Let me read to you from the living Bible. He said, Hearing this a man sitting at the table with Jesus, exclaimed, What a blessing it would be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied with this story A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, come, the banquet is ready. But, all, but, but they all began making 
excuses. One said, I have heard. I'm going to excuse me. Bless me. He said, I, just, I have just bought a field and must inspect it. You know, devil time was mostly at night, wasn't it? Mm. How you going to inspect some ground in the dark? I was say, he had another one. Please excuse me. You know what another said, I have just bought five pair of oxen and I want to try them out. Now, here he is. Go go out there and ply it. They didn't even in the, in the dog. How you gonna try it out? How you gonna know? What they gonna do it? Man, what are the excuses? And they said, please have, you know, he said, please excuse me. He said, another said, I have, I now have a wife. I can't come. In other words, she won't let me. I, I, I can't go. She's in the way. So she told me I can't come. So excuse What's an excuse? An excuse is this, to release from obligation. Or mm -hmm. uh, uh, pretend, uh, 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 pretend reason for conduct. A pretended reason for the conduct. To try to minimize or pardon a fault. An excuse. Why do we make excuses? Why, why do we make excuses? Uh, let, let's get this here. Uh, uh, number one, we should not be making excuses because they usually lead to sin in life. Oh my God. Hmm? We make excuses. Uh, you know, uh, I, man, I, I just, hey, 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 look, look. I, I just can't, I, I just can't do certain things. And it's going to lead to what down the road to doing something wrong. I can't do what God said you, so I just have to do what, you know, what I feel like doing. He said, you will always hear excuses like, uh, no one is perfect. Yeah. Hey, y'all heard that excuse? You know, I, I, I've been pastoring for over 35 years, and, and I've heard that excuse often by Christians. You know, and, and they, no, they make excuses because they really wants to do something or uh, 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 make a, 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 a well, well, to let me say, release them from their obligation for doing right. That's right. It's just as easy. Let me tell you something. It's just as easy to do right as it is wrong. Y'all know that? It is. You know, I one thing about God when He when He convicts you. You know what? What you got to do? You got to look at yourself. Say, I go and look at myself in the mirror and the spiritual mirror of the Word of God. And if I see that I'm doing something, I'll get it right. I can do the right thing. And hey, I won't have to I won't have to feel guilty about that anymore. Listen here. You know, you know, we, we always say, 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 let me read it again. It says, we should not be making excuses because they usually lead to sin in life. You will always hear excuses like no one is perfect. From someone who wants to justify rebellion toward God's word. You know, I, I, I'm going to tell you something in a minute uh, because you, you, you're bigger than your excuses. Hmm? Right now. Huh? Christians are new creations, aren't they? We're new creations. Yes. Uh, we can't live a life of willfully sin. You know, willfully sin, I just willfully do it. If I find myself in a position where I'm doing it, I, all I do is hey, get, put myself in a position to where I don't have to do it. You know, or uh, uh, rectify through the word, not not through through anger at people who who, who 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 are the light. You know, sometimes the light walk in front of you, and and, 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 and if you do it, when I talk when I talk about light, I'm talking about the people of God who are walking up right, and their life is shining before God, Amen. and they walk into a person who you know, may have some imperfections, and they are maybe doing something that they shouldn't be doing, or something that lacks on to them. But they need to check off. And when the light comes, don't get angry with that person. Do what? You see it. When the light comes and it shows up, knock it off. How do I knock it off? Through the word of God. God is a deliverer, y'all. Yes, he is. He is. Can I read it again? Is that Christians are a new creation. You know, uh, what? We're a new creation. We can't live a life of willful sin. You know, the word convicts us that way. You know, you get angry. Some people get angry when the word convicts 
I'm going to tell y'all when I got it. You know, but this, this, this kind of funny to me now as I look back down my life, my own life. See, I was trying to make excuses, you know, when we, when we went to a word church, you know, a church that what preached the word, taught the word, you know, they, they, they preached the word to us and, and we could hear the word and we got an understanding of the word. So, I, you know, I was there and, and this thing of, of selfishness was on me. You know, I, amen, I wanted my, I, amen, this is certain things I'm going to do. Now, now, when it came down to certain sins in my life, certain sins, I would, I would willfully hear the word, and I, and I would go home, and I would examine, I got to get rid of this. And my wife would tell you, I used to go home, and I would get the broom and start sweeping. Yeah. And, and, and it was an example of spiritually sweeping. I, I didn't understand it at first, but they, the Holy Spirit had shown me, you're spiritually sweeping. You're cleaning up some things. But yet, when I was in that word church, and my wife was in there, and she would convict me, but I wouldn't hear her. Uh, I, you know, we had a lot of people there mm -hmm. in that church, in that word church. But it wasn't a lot of tithers there. People didn't want to tithe. You know, some did and some did. I, I remember that was one guy. If he didn't have any tithe, he would go and borrow and pay. Yeah. I'm telling you, he would borrow somebody. You know, and that was... That, that, that was his conviction. Yeah. It was on him. So that one Sunday the pastor got up and he began to teach on tithing. And I didn't, you know, I wasn't no tithing at that time because I was new. Because I, I came out of a church who, who would believe in salary, you know, or, or just taking off. Because the pastor didn't want to tithe. And he didn't want to talk about tithing. So then he said, then I, I, you know, there was a bunch of us. Even some of the teachers got angry. That was teaching the word. And, 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 and uh, I began to go to, I went to the crowd that I identified. I went to the crowd that didn't want to tie. Kind of levelated over to them. Yeah. But then when the others on the other side were tired, it was tired and they would say certain things. And they would say, well, well I'm going to tie and look how God is blessing. And there were some people who were really faithful and God was really blessing. Yeah. And, and I was struggling, but I was making good money. But I didn't want to tie. I wouldn't just give it up. And so my wife kept telling me, that's tired, that's tired. I said, no. I'm making an excuse. I said, well, you know, we got this to do, we got that to do, we got this, and, and we're trying to get this, we're trying to get that. And I said, I, and then I got up under such conviction. I said, well, okay, I'm going to go ahead and try. So at first I was doing what? Making excuses. I, I did it. Uh, but God would, he would convict me, and I, and I couldn't get away from it. And then I found myself being blessed. My wife and I began to be blessed. We tied it and we began to make more. We began to have more. Yes. You know, even, even on the job would open up and, and I would get overtime pay. And boy, I was making some money back then. Yes. I, I'm serious, y'all. And I had favor. Yes. People, God gave me favor on the job. Yes. Uh, the people would come to me and ask me, why you want to come in and uh, just watch some people that we were training to get them right in the job. And I would go and I would just sit there and then, you know, especially. Uh, before, you know, the hours was up, they would let me go home and still continue to pay me for the hours, and I would be at home. Favor! You know, once you start doing what God said, He'll open up the floodgates. Yes, yes. I'm serious, y'all. You know, I tell you what, you look at the lives of somebody who faithfully gives and, and tithes and faithfully gives an offer. They never have flight on Never. Never have them. They constantly going. I was hearing something this morning. I heard a testimony this morning, and, and it blessed my soul. Uh, how how this person? He's a tither, and listen to what it is. He said how God had blessed him, and, and to get stay repairs did on his house and stuff, and how God had given more than enough because he had prayed. That's what. That's his blessing. No excuse. No excuse. Listen again. How about if I don't want to go to church? Ooh, no. Hmm. No Making the excuse. Uh, listen, they said, how about I don't, if I don't want to go to church or become a Christian because there are too many hypocrites? Mm. That's an excuse. I don't want to go because there are what, too many hypocrites. But listen, there are hypocrites everywhere. Huh? Everywhere you go in your life, there's what? Some hypocrites. So that's what? That excuse won't, what? won't pan out. If you don't accept Christ uh, for others, you do it for yourself. You don't accept. You know what? People don't get saved for others. Come on. I got saved for, for who? For 
I'm on set. I want to miss that. I'm serious. Let me tell y'all something. When God opened my eyes and, and I began to see and I began to read this word and, and the Holy Spirit began to show me a certain thing, I don't want to go to hell. Hell is real. Don't let nobody fool you. The word of God said it's real. Yes. So you want to do what? Avoid it at all costs. Listen, you because you are responsible for your own salvation. Yes, you are. Yes. Huh? You are responsible for I'm responsible for my own salvation. Offers. Huh. Another way you can make what excuses is by being afraid to do God's will. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid to do it. It might not work. You know, some people are afraid to do it because they don't want to be what? They don't want to be criticized. You know, because the world will laugh at you for doing what? God's will. The world will laugh at us. Hey, you you, you want to do what? Man, you sure that's crazy. You, you tell how, how you, you, you mean tell me you can't have no fun? And I can have fun. What, what, what you call fun? Something people call fun is destruction. Look at the parties and things that people are having now. People are being what? Shot and Oh, yes. And when you just tell about somebody getting what shot or, or killed, fighting, running, but, and they make excuses. I got to have this some fun, man. This is what I'm going to do. And then end up dead. And then they want some preacher to get up and tell a lie. Man, this young show was a good person. Oh, man, did they do? Then they do good work. I've heard it and people that wanted me to say it but then I just preached the gospel kind of got to stay back from certain things you know sometimes you have to avoid certain things if you can Listen, if you're sure that God uh, can do something why, why, why can do something don't be afraid. If God told you to do something, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Amen. You know, stand up, hey man, this is, this is me now. And you know, God gave me a holy boldness after I got saved when the Lord saved me. And, and I used to pray, Lord, give me a holy boldness. Because let me tell you something, people wanted you to compromise. People wanted you to be religious. You know, because I, I knew a lot of religious folk. You know, you, I'm talking about that. They went to church. But they wasn't saved. They were just what? Religion. They were the custom. They had a custom of going to church on Sunday, but they wasn't saved. And then and on, on, on rest of the, when they left church and they started on that Sunday evening, because I used to do it, but I, I didn't call myself no religious person uh, before I got saved, and go out and try to find it. And in it, kind of little girl, there I could find a drink. And they gambled and do anything I could have. I, I, I would go to church every now and then, send it back. But you know, but religious people, and when I got there, religious people were there also. Mm -hmm. Some of the deacons was there. <laughs> Trustee. They were there. So you know, it was just being religious, but then God opened up a broad realm of revelation to us. Mm. Whereas we could do what? Preach the gospel. Yes. And stand on the gospel. Amen. Listen, young, don't give in. To excuses that can keep you from really living the best life God has for you. Don't give in to what excuses. They're going to keep you from living what the best life that God can give you. Oh, George Miles quoted that once. But let's know what, what, what uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin quoted. He said, be stronger than your excuses. My God. So you got to be stronger than your excuses. He that is good for making excuses is seldom good for anything else. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're good, good for making excuses? You're good for anything. Procrastinating. Lord, yes. Man, I was a I, I was procrastinating. I, I got to say, I, I fit, I, you know what? I, I, I see myself as something. And I have to look back and I say, procrastinating is putting off. I won't do it now. But I'll do it later. I, 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 I used to wake up in the morning. And I, if I had something to do uh, that was urgent for the ministry, my body would tell me, oh man, take home. Man, put it up. You, you can do it tomorrow. 
I'm talking about me. And I would do what? Put it off. Procrastinating. Putting it off. You can procrastinate on. I, 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 I can't read the word right now. Uh, why, why can't I read? Man, I'll do it later. My mind just ain't right. I can't pray. Now, I pray tomorrow. Procrastinate. Putting it off. You know, you know, not only that, but I, I can't read the word. I can't read the word now. Right now, I, I got I got to go on mine. I got to look at something else. I got to read something else. Mm -hmm. Can't read the word. No, no, no. Uh, I, I'll read it tomorrow. I'm too tired right now. I can't read the word. You know, I got to go to bed. I'm sleepy. I, I, I just can't read right now. My mind frame is not right. You know, I got too many things on my mind. Right now, I, I just can't do it. I, I put it off. You know what? Procrastinate. People procrastinate. Maybe I'll go to church next week. <laughs> procrastinate. Next week come. Well, I, I still don't feel like something has to come about. I got something else to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember we, we went down. We were witnessing. We were not witnessing at all. We were down some streets down, down on Seaboard. And uh, people said, what time can I have to? Well, was, we started church hours. Uh, Worship service was starting at eleven o'clock. Yeah. Well, man, that's too early for me to get up. I can't get, I can't get up that early. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe, maybe sometime I, I'll be able to get up. And then I would ride down Sebo, maybe about down thirty to see them all out there. Yeah. Same ones who said, "Hey, I, I just can't get up. I, I, I put it off. I, I, I don't feel like going to church." You know, we, we, we constantly blame others. For our sins. Uh -huh. hmm? Alright. We blame others for sin. Yes. You know, Christians are good at don't blame nobody else. Look in the mirror and say, It's me, Lord. It's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing here. Well, here at the meeting. I'm in need of what prayer? I'm not trying to brush you down or hurt you or nothing. Uh, well, we make excuses, y'all. Be stronger than your excuses. Because Jesus said something about these people who were, who were invited. But what he was really talking about, being invited into the kingdom, that great feast in heaven. Wow. That's what he was talking about. And here they were what, making excuses. But then Jesus said something in that 21st verse. If you read it and read it on down through that 24th verse, you'll hear what Jesus said. You know, he said, he said in the 21st verse, he said, so that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets, the lanes, and the city, and bring in here the poor, and the maimed, and the lame, and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done. As you commanded, and still there was room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Listen here. Don't get invited. And make excuses. Don't say I, I, I'm in the kingdom and make excuses for not doing what God said. I got to do it, Lord. You, you told me to do it. If I, and let me tell you something. If you want to be blessed, highly favored. If you want to be on the top and, 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 and not the bottom. If you want to be the head and not the tail. Then don't make excuses for not doing what God said to you. If we do the word, if we build our lives on the word of God. We're going to be what? We're going to be blessed, y'all. We're going to be highly favored. We're going to be happy. I know it may not seem right to the flesh. I, may not, I know it may not seem right to your rational mind or to other people's rational mind because they don't know. You who know and who can see, you will not be led by the blind. Jesus said, wait a minute, listen, y'all. He said, leave the blind alone because the blind, if the blind try to lead the blind, they're going to do what? Fall on a ditch. But if a man who can see, dog, a woman who can see, don't let, don't let a 
blind person lead you who can't see. Otherwise, you've been born again. God has opened your eyes. You can see. Yes, I can see him. God, when I let a blind but a person out there who's not saved, come in and tell me how to live my life. How, 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 how can you do it? Y'all remember the sermon that Elijah had? Elijah's servant was looking where? In the natural. In the physical. You know when the Syrian army had surrounded them. Because why? The prophet. Elijah was doing what? Warning Israel. About what? The Syrian army was going to do. But, but they were doing what? Planning the attack. And every time they planned the attack, God would show it to the prophet. And the prophet would go to Elijah, I mean, Elijah would go to the children of Israel and warn them. So when the Syrian army leaders went to their king, they went to him and told him, he said, because the king asked him, how is it they know when we're doing what we're doing? How, how do they know that we're planning to attack at such and such a place? How do they know? And one of, and one of his servants said, listen, king. He said, every time we plan an attack, they have a seal in the midst of them. And God speaks to that seal. And that seal speaks to the Israel. And Israel can plan their counterattack. So they know that we're coming. So they, and the king said, go down there and get him. Go down there and get him and bring him here. So look what he did. The Syrian army had what? Almost 50,000 men. They went down and circuit the camp of Elijah. And I'm, 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 I'm going somewhere with this. this guy, they circuit the camp. And so Elijah's servant got up one morning and he opened the opening of the tent and he looked out and he saw the Syrian army surrounding them. And he ran back and he said, he shook him. He said, Master, the Syrian army, the enemy, has surrounded us. He said, they're out there. And they were going to take us captive. And, and Elijah looked at him and said, wait a minute, son. He said, there is more with us than it is with them. That's it. Come on, Can I give y'all some of my uh, analysis? Come I know that that servant said, you and me, Whoa. Two. two. Looked out there, 50,000. All around us. God said, uh, that, excuse me. Elijah said, Lord, open his eyes and let him see. Let him see who is surrounded there. So he went back. Elijah told him to go back. He went back and he picked out a tent and he saw the Syrian army around them. And then he saw surrounding the Syrian army chariots of fire and angels surrounding them. I want you to know that God can open your eyes and he'll let us see things that the enemy try to blind us from. He'll let you see that when the enemy tell you, make excuses. He'll let you see, God will let you see that, hey, you don't have to make excuses, just do what I say. Just obey the word. And the word will work for you. Just let me open your eyes, your spiritual eyes. And let you see that there can be some disaster at the end of excuses. But there can be blessings at the end of obeying. So what we got to do, obey the word of God. Do what God said do. And be blessed. My God is an awesome God, y'all. He's able to do all things but fail. So I don't have to make excuses any longer. I'll just do what you said do, Lord. I'll obey you. I know people are not going to like you. Some people are not going to like you for standing up for what's right. There might be some people who talk about you for doing what? What is right. But you got to still what? Do it right. Because as soon as their eyes are open in that area, they'll come back and say, I'm so grateful that you stood up. I'm grateful that you didn't compromise. I'm grateful that you didn't tell me what I wanted to hear, but you told me what I needed to hear. I'm grateful. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, we can be what grateful for the thing that God has told us. And let me tell you all something. I'm, I'm close. I'm through. And there's no excuse 
for you not accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Listen to Hebrews 3 and 15. Listen to what he said in Hebrews 3 and 15. He said, as has just been said, today you hear my voice. Do not harden your heart hmm? as they did in what? In the rebellion. So don't rebel against the word of God. Do what the word says. Yeah. The day that you hear the word of God, did you hear the word? If God is drawing you and telling you it's time for you to step out of darkness into his marvelous life. In other words, to accept him yeah. as your Lord and your, sa and sa your Savior. Yeah. Don't harden your heart. Don't, don't, don't put a callus on your heart. Some people's heart is calluses, have grown callus. Let their conscience have been seen with a hot eye. The word don't penetrate and don't bother them anymore. They can hear the word and they'll have no conviction. That's a bad place to be, y'all. But I hear the word, I, I, and you feel the conviction of God drawing you, say, it is your time. He said, I'm inviting you, Jesus. I'm inviting you to come into the kingdom of God. You're being invited to come into the kingdom. I want to share with you, uh, it's a simple prayer. And it, there's no particular form of but if you pray this prayer, if you're not saved, and, and if you pray this prayer with me and invite Jesus Christ to come into your life, invite him to come in. He's not going to come in except you invite him. But then he'll invite you into the kingdom. Listen, all you have to do is pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I invite you to come into my life and save me and forgive me of all of my sins. I now accept you as my Lord and Savior. Now you understand, oh, thank you for saving me. That, then you ask the Lord, I invite you to live in me and live your life through me. Oh, he'll do it. So that's why you need to get into a church. Let me tell you, get into a word church. You want to be, everybody wants to be blessed. But can I tell you this, you can't have the best of both worlds. Hmm? Some people want the best of both worlds. I want, I want a party, a hard. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm going to say Friday, Saturday, and then go to church on Sunday, and Monday I live like hell. That's, that's, that's like I said. Hey, I'm what I will, I want. And then you still want, hey, I'm going on my way to heaven anyhow. But that's why it's important to get into the word of God. If anybody's compromising with something that you're doing that is wrong, and you know it, don't listen to that person. Please don't. Don't listen to them because they, that, that Satan, Satan will use them to try to get you to, to a place to where you can't receive the blessings of God, or you end up in hell, and then they'll turn around and get saved and live a victorious life yeah. and be on their way to heaven. And then you lose them long time. So don't do it. Don't do it. Listen to somebody who will tell you the truth. I know truth is sometimes challenging. You ought to want to be spiritually challenged. I, I you know, I, I'm spiritually challenged. I'm spiritually challenged. And, and let me tell you something. Am I perfect now that I'm, I'm saved? No, I'm not perfect, but I don't make excuses. For, for my road, if I find myself doing something wrong, I back up and, hey, I've got to get rid of it. I can't do that. You know, I, I, I got to stop. And I, and I know how, let me tell you something. With every temptation, there's a way of escape. Yes, yes. You know, God will make a way for you. He'll, he'll give you an opening. And I, and I have to say this, you know, I, I, was, I was happy on Friday. I, I was elated on Friday. Young man come in and he wanted to get married. He had been coming here since he was a little kid. And he's in San, uh, San Diego now. In the, in, the, in the Marine. But he was on leave, so he came here and, and he wanted to get married. Before we went back. And so, I was just in there, I said, young people still get, you know, want to get married. Some people, they still want to get married. I'm going to get married. And he's, he, he, he I, we were sitting over in my office, him and his, his little fiance, as we was talking, and he said, I said, why are you in there, man? You brought her in and, and introduced us to her, to her. He said, well, I want to make sure she was the right one. And I say, well, it's good to get married. He said, well, you taught me the right way. Amen. So you taught me the right way. Maybe feel good, you know, to see young people still getting married. And uh, we married them on Friday. 
And he's on his way back to San Diego now. And he's getting ready to prepare for her to come home and jump. So, you know, it's just a blessing. It's still a blessing. You see some people say, all our young folk going to Prayer TV Christian Broadcasting on Roku. Your ministry will be shared on social media platforms, streamed on Roku with the reach of 55 million homes. It will be your choice of day and time, professional editing, and a low weekly cost of $25 a week. Contact us today at 941-782-8322 or you can email at Winning in Prayer tv at gmail.com again contact us at 941-782-8322 winning in prayer tv at gmail.com to get more information thank you and hope to hear from you soon an employment issue father god we do thank you for those that may be facing an employment issue father your word declares that the king's heart is in the hand of the lord as the rivers of water and you turn it Turn it there with us ever you will. So God, we just thank you for those who are in power. We thank you for favor with those that are in power, that they will look favorably upon us, God. And so we just thank you for victory in all circumstances, all situations. God, we thank you for reports of, of not, not only one job offer, God, but we thank you in advance for multiple job offers, God, with good pay, and good benefits, God. And so, God, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise right now. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen.
can uh, smell it, this is what you have to do with the word. It has to be so you want to eat it. It has to be so that you can smell it. You have to yearn for the word. And your yearning only comes by hearing, by practicing, by having it. You know, several scriptures on, on, a, uh, piece of, on a piece of paper. Uh, and I would take them to take them with me to work. Hallelujah. And, I, and while I was working, I would I would take it out of my pocket, read it, then quote it to myself. Uh -huh. I would go to the next one. I would, I would and I'm going by. Lady Tammy, we are on location, so I'm glad to be here on tonight. We're in one, he's in one place, and I am in another. So, but I'm still glad to be here. Glad that you would join us on Friday Night Live. This is Apostle Carla McDougall with Carla McDougal Ministries. Amen. I am one of the ministries that broadcast on the Winning in Prayer Network. And I'd like to take a few moments um, to just share with you my experience and to share with you um, the benefits of being able to broadcast through a godly network. Amen. I'd like to share with you um, my experience of being able to express the heart of God and to be able to share the gospel with a diverse group of people throughout this earth to be able to advance the kingdom of God in the earth by way of preaching and teaching, by way of prophesying and even in some cases providing counsel as it were to some individuals to be able to release the word of God so that the unbeliever might repent and accept Christ as his or her savior so that the believer that the babe in Christ may be strengthened and may be able to grow um, and to grow in grace and to grow by grace and to grow up into the things of God so that the more experienced the more mature perfected believer will be able to be strengthened a man in their walk and along this journey so I am extremely grateful to God for the man of God Apostle Daryl and the woman of God Pastor Tammy Johnson who are visionary and founders of the Winning in Prayer Network it has been an honor it has been an extreme blessing to, to reach a diverse group of people throughout this earth and throughout this nation to be able to minister um, in a diverse way. Um, as you all know, for those of you who are preachers of the gospel, if you are considering to be a part of this great family of ministries, I would encourage you to do so. Amen. Um, as you know, as preachers, those of us who are preachers, we understand that our greatest mandate, that our greatest assignment, that our greatest task in this earth as preachers is to be able to publish or to demonstrate the word of God and to be able to do so in uh, to a diverse group of people. The scripture reminds us, amen, that when we publish the word of God, when we publish the heart of God, we open up the earth, we create pathways and we create um, roads and avenues by which God's people can be drawn unto him. The scripture decrees and we declare that as Christ is lifted high above the earth that he will draw all men not unto him and to have this awesome opportunity to have this awesome platform that reaches throughout the world that reaches throughout this earth to be able to lift God up by way of word to be able to to lift up the Savior by way of the word so that with that same word God can draw his people not to him close to him 
them, draw his people into his bosom, um, cause his people to be a part of his family, that the spirit of adoption can be released and others be drawn in. I am eternally grateful and I am honored for the opportunity to be amongst such a great cloud of witnesses in this day's generation who are using this exact um, platform, this exact network to be able to publish the gospel for as many people, for as many diverse groups of people that are in this earth. There are that many diverse preachers of the gospel. It gives each of us the opportunity to administer the word of God to God's people in a way that will not only draw them unto him, but will manifest the promises of God concerning their lives. This platform, amen, is one of the great God platforms by which we advance the kingdom of God, by which we are able to advance the righteousness, the peace, and the joy of the Lord in the Holy Ghost throughout this earth. It is a tool, a mechanism that God has allowed for his preachers and the ministers of the gospel to be able to reach magnitudes and multitudes and diverse groups of people that we otherwise will not be able to meet, that some of us will be brought into nations and into countries that we otherwise would have no experience with. So I am once again eternally grateful to God for the opportunity, a man to freely express without fear, without hesitation, the heart of God, the will of God, and the word of God concerning his people to be able to express the promises and to convey and to relay and to relate to the promises of God that the people of God, that they who confess will be able to be partakers of the promise. So once again, to Apostle Darrell and Pastor Tammy Johnson, I say once again, it's an honor and it is a privilege and I am eternally grateful for this great opportunity to use this streaming platform on the Ro on Roku TV, Winning in Prayer Network on Roku TV to be able to share the heart of God. God bless you. Once again, I am Apostle Carla McDougal with Carla McDougal Ministries. And I minister and broadcast on the winning in prayer.
Are you looking for a place to grow your ministry? Join Winning in Prayer TV Christian Broadcasting on Roku. Your ministry will be shared on social media platforms, streamed on Roku with the reach of 55 million homes. It will be your choice of day and time, professional editing, and a low weekly cost of $25 a week. Contact us today at 941 782 8322 or you can email at winning in prayer tv at gmail.com again contact us at 941-782-8322 winning in prayer tv at gmail.com to get more information thank you and hope to hear from you soon